Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Austin and welcome back to the game development in Unity 3D tutorial series. When we left off, we did some conditional checks and did some stuff with them. Go ahead and delete this else, we don't need that. So we have a health, we have a damage player method and all that stuff, but what we want to do really quick is I want to damage the player every frame just so we can see it going down, right? So every frame, I want to do one damage to the player. Every single frame, right? So in the update functions where I'll put that, I'll get rid of the start. We don't need that now. So every frame, it'll call this method and subtract one health from his health. And then once it gets down to a certain point, it will destroy the object. What I want to do is increase his health to... Let's do a thousand. Yeah, let's do yeah, I'll do a thousand. Oh, I need to save that eventually, I guess. Save all the time. No matter what you do, save. If something happens and you lose all your stuff, you'll be upset. So every frame we're taking one health away, and then his health is a thousand, so it'll take a while to get down to a zero, which is the idea. So what I want to do now is I want to access this value from another script. And to do that, we're going to be using a cool feature of the way Unity works, object references. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another script or another cube, hit control D. So now I have these two cubes. I want to use the same script for both of them. I'm going to say, no, we'll use, we'll actually make a different script. It'll be a bit easier for us. So if I was to just right click here and go create C sharp script, call this other demo. Now inside of here, we'll set up some stuff. I'll double click on that, open this up. And we'll keep all this stuff in for this time. And we'll create a variable. This will be a public. This will be a game object variable. So that's the object type of game object. So we can set this to equal to the actual game object itself, an object reference to the player's game object. And a game object, remember, is this thing, this thing, and this thing. The components on that game object are a bit different. We have to access the component of demo on the player. Okay? So we have to get the game object first, and then we'll go into the component and find the component we want. Now we could just drag the, com the uh, set this to say demo, which we may do that actually. So this should equal to the demo class. So now we can actually store a component of demo, because demo is now a component, right? It is a class or it can, it's a class which is a component on another another object. That's the idea. So public demo, and then we'll give it a name of player. We'll do player script, because this is actually the script of the player. Never use these naming conventions if you're actually working on a game. It's a stupid way to do it. It's just for explanation purposes. So player, or public demo, player script. Now, if I was to hit control S, come over here, and look at, uh, I didn't attach it to that. We'll remove this from this one, because this is the other cube. And I'll drag the new script onto him. And you see now you have player script with an empty field here. It says none. Looking for a demo type, though. It wants a type of demo. And cube has a type of demo. So if I was to drag this cube onto that, it'll say cube, and in parentheses, demo. So it found the demo component on the cube. So now I can access uh, stuff inside of this class right here from this class, which is quite cool. I'll show you the other way to go about doing this if you have access to just the game object here in a second. But now we can say player script dot health. See, there's health. It's a public variable. We can access it. The class is public, so we can access it. It all is doing fine, right? And so we have access to the player script dot health and we can do a check in here. We can say if, I don't know why I keep times so many typos. We can say if, just like that, like why did I do that? If the player script dot health is less than or equal to zero. So if the player dies, we can detect that from a different script. And I'll say print another object has detected that the player has died. Okay, so when this dies, this object will be able to detect that. And that's kind of cool. So we'll click play. How much damage? 
Let's uh, go to the actual cube here with a thousand life. Yeah, I don't want to wait that long. We'll do, we'll do 150. Now when it gets down to zero, we'll, uh, it'll say at zero, and then it'll be printing. Another object has detected that the player has died. That's pretty cool, right? So what if you just have access to the game object? So we'll change this to game object player script. So how do I get the actual demo? Go away menu. How do I get the actual demo from the game object script? That's a pretty cool thing. We can go to the game object that we want to add it to. The update, is it updated? Has it updated? No, it's an error. What was my error? Oh, well, I need to get rid of this for now. So I'll just uh, control X that, which is to cut it for now, because it doesn't like that being there. Now, when it goes away, you'll see player script none looking for a game object, though. And this is a game object that contains the demo script. So now it has access to the game object cube. Let's change this name to player, playee, and you'll see it, it'll change it to the same name here. It's not stupid. It knows the reference is still there. So we have access to player script, but we want access to the player. So it's just the player object itself. Now at the start, I can say player, uh, let's see, player. No, what we'll do is we'll do a private demo. So we already did this, right, of player script. And we only have access to the player game object though. So what I can do is I can say player script at the start whenever this script is uh, initialized. Player script is equal to player dot get component. Now, well, what's happening here is a lot of stuff that's very important for you to understand. So if you do not understand this, please let me know. So we're saying player script, which is has a type of demo, which is the class we're looking for, is equal to player, which is the game object of player dot get component, which is a, a method that's available to game objects in Unity. And then we're going to pass a type. So we're looking for demo. So the type we're looking for is demo. Now these uh, greater than and less than brackets here are just what's wrapped around the type for get component. When you see that, it'll, it'll be looking for a type. And then close that. So player is gonna look for a component. Remember that these are components. So I click on this, these are components. And this component is called demo. So it's looking for a component called demo or by the type of demo. So if it finds one, player script will be equal to that demo component. And now we can do the same copy and paste there or the just paste. <laughs> and we want access to the health just to show you that it's working. It'll auto complete to health for us. And that, that's what, that tells you you have a connection. Sometimes it may not work, but most of the time it does work. If it auto completes, whenever you're going down through the dots with a syntax like that, and it auto completes, you have a connection. If it doesn't auto complete, you may still have a connection and there's something funny going on. But most of the time you have a connection. So this will still work even though we're going at it a different way. If I click play, watch his health go down. There is an issue. <laughs> Which reference is it talking? Player script dot health. It should player dot get com. I don't know. See, this is what you do when you mess up, you get an error. What did that do? Oh, it's not even. Did I change it without knowing? Maybe. So once this player's health gets down to zero, It'll say, I don't know what I did. I'll notice in the video, but I messed it up. But uh, yeah, it got down to zero and it's telling me that and then the player uh, object was deleted. So if we move this cube, this cube is inside of this guy, I believe. Yeah, so if we click play now. We'll see both cubes. The player's life will get down to zero. It'll start to die. Five seconds later, the player's cube will be deleted and then our other cube remains. He detected that though, as you can see, because we have a we have a reference to the object that contains that script. I am repeating myself, but this is so important. You have to understand this. If you do not get it, let me know below. That's going to do it for this tutorial. This may not be the end of the beginner series where I'm doing an introduction into programming 
in Unity, as it was quite short. But next time, we'll be doing a bit more stuff that actually is kind of fun, maybe. Mm, I don't know. I don't know if you consider loops fun, right? So that'll do it for this part. My name is Austin, and I'll see you next time.